refueling the generators during the storm. Some of the uh, items that you'll probably uh, need to look for after the generator's deployed, the next day the generator will be refueled. Some of the tanks have the uh, digital meters. This one here has a mechanical meter. Whenever you reach the site, the gallons will need to be recorded. The generators also have what's called a MATS ID number. The MATS ID, the engine hours, and the number of gallons pumped and the time in which the generator was refueled. The tank and the pump is a very simple mechanism. This is your own off switch. The, uh, the tank will be supplied with a uh, cord. This will either have alligator clips that you'll connect to the battery, or some of them is equipped with a trailer plug, which will plug into the trailer plug on the truck. This is the on off switch, which will start the pump. You'll hear the pump hum. The, uh, some of the generators have fuel gauges that don't always work properly. It's a good idea to carry a stick or a measuring device such as a yardstick that you can actually manually check the fuel level. Uh, common problems that we have with the fuel tanks is the pickup tube which goes from the pump down inside the tank will vibrate loose. It's a plastic telescopic type tube uh, with the vibrations and things. Sometimes those will become loose and fall into the tank. Another common problem, fuel will come out slow, is the particulate filter. These need to be changed after every thousand hour, or every thousand gallons of fuel that's pumped. It just unthreads and can be simply replaced. After, the, uh, after you arrive to the scene, you get the information that's required, MADS ID, Runtime hours, number of gallons, all that information needs to be reported back into the command center. And always after you do the fuel, go back, double check, make sure all the lids, the caps have been replaced, all the doors have been closed on the generator, and make sure the gates are locked. That's pretty much fueling in a nutshell.